G'day there guys, hat wearing Marky is making a return and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you enjoyed today's bloody good episode and with that said I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie and let's go. Cheers. Posted by a deleted user, titled, Am I the asshole for refusing to cook dinner for my boyfriend since he won't respect my cooking utensils? I, 21 female, live with my boyfriend, 28 male, and I recently purchased some new wooden spoons, like the big kind, from a co-worker who is an aggressive pampered chef consultant. I don't make very much money, and frankly these spoons were overpriced, but I wanted her to leave me alone, and after all, they are nice spoons, and I will definitely use them. They are hand wash only, which I informed my boyfriend of when I brought them home. It's been a couple of months, and I find them in the dishwasher pretty regularly. Every time, I have nicely reminded him that they are hand wash only, and please don't put them in the dishwasher. I have said, you don't need to wash them, leave them out, and I will wash them. Every time he says okay, but then, you know where this is going. I often come home on my lunch break to keep up with housework. A few days ago, I came home and found one of my wooden spoons in the dishwasher. I texted my boyfriend about it, this time with some emphasis on the fact that I've repeatedly asked him not to put this item in the dishwasher, and it will literally end up destroying the spoon, and I really don't want that to happen to a new utensil that I just bought. He replied, I don't care. I was completely taken aback. I expected him to say, okay, sorry, and probably keep doing it, not to be completely rude to me. For some background, I have always cooked dinner since we moved in together two years ago. I was in school, and it felt like part of how I contributed to the household since I wasn't making very much money, only working part-time. But I'm out of school now and working more and contributing more to bills, so I don't feel the same obligation to cook. He usually cleans up after dinner by putting things in the dishwasher, but doesn't clean anything else. When he got home after work that night, he asked what we were having for dinner. I told him that I'd already eaten. He was extremely upset that I hadn't cooked for him or otherwise arranged dinner. He stomped around the house and eventually got takeout. The next day he asked me what we were having for dinner and I told him that I wasn't planning on making anything. He asked why I wasn't cooking anymore and I said that if he didn't care about whether or not my wooden spoons got destroyed, that I didn't care about cooking dinner. He totally lost it said that I was completely overreacting, it was no reason to stop cooking dinner without warning, told me that I'm being immature and that he's too busy to keep track of what can or can't go in the dishwasher and that it's unfair that I'd punish him for it. It's not his fault he doesn't care about wooden spoons and insinuated that our relationship might be in trouble if this is how I react to conflicts. I do feel like maybe this wasn't the most mature route, and I'm a lot younger than him, so I'm worried that he's right that I'm being unreasonable and immature, but like, how hard is it to leave my wooden spoons out for me to wash after being told multiple times that they can't go in the dishwasher? In the comments, Smegging Rimmer says, Not the asshole. He's acting like a bratty child because you won't cook for him, even going so far as to hint the relationship is in danger? Take the out that he so generously gave you. It's not about the wooden spoons. It's about respecting your partner. He's deliberately ignoring a very simple request. The fact that he said, I don't care, really clinched it for me, to be honest. Not the asshole. One, it's not rocket science that wood gets destroyed in very wet environments like a dishwasher. Even if he didn't know that before, he knows now. Two, he was telling the truth when he said he didn't care. What an asshole. 3. He is also right that the relationship is in trouble, but it's because of his behavior, not yours. Seriously, you can do better. 4. Also kind of a red flag that a 26-year-old was moving in with a 19-year-old. He sounds controlling and chose someone so young because it's easier to control someone much younger than you. Not the asshole. Also, OP, you were 19 when he was 25 when you moved in. I know this isn't what you want to hear, but it sounds like he had to date younger because girls in his age group saw the red flags of him being a child and having anger and respect issues. I'm just basing myself off of this one incident, but he seems to have a total lack of respect for you and is hoping that because you moved in together and spent a good amount of time with him, that you won't leave. He's 27 now. He should know how to take care of himself. If he continues to treat you this way, please leave. 
You aren't a maid, personal chef, etc. I myself am 24, and I used to date a guy exactly like him. The red flags are sailing. If you started dating before the move-in, I really feel that he could be a creep in disguise. Back up to the post, there is an edit. So this totally blew up, and I'm pretty overwhelmed by the response. It's clear to me that most of you are right that the incident is a red flag, and highly telling about the dynamics of our relationship overall. I've always thought that I'm happy in this relationship, and that it's really good, but now I'm really confused and have a lot to think about. To answer some common questions, we met when I was 17 and he was 24. He does do some chores. Well, he takes out the garbage sometimes, mows the lawn sometimes, though I confess that I also do that one on my lunch break occasionally, and handles all the car maintenance, but he's never done any real cleaning in the house. The house is his. He bought it when I was 19, and I do currently pay for half the mortgage, bills, and groceries. It leaves me essentially no money for myself. Our finances are pretty mixed, and he monitors my credit card usage obsessively, to the point that he will sometimes call me 15 minutes after a purchase to ask for details about it. Why did you spend $54.28 at Costco? Which I see now is also pretty controlling and unhealthy. I am seriously reconsidering the relationship, but also don't really know how I would leave. I have never lived on my own. I don't want to move back in with my parents because that's a whole other story. I don't know the first thing about getting an apartment on my own, but I don't want this dynamic to be the rest of my life. Thanks for the eye-opening revelation, but damn, where do I go from here? Second edit, I forgot to mention that he makes about twice as much money as I do. Third edit, holy crap you guys. You are all being so amazing to me, it's really overwhelming and emotional. I'm hardly responding to comments and messages because I'm grappling with a lot of hard truths about all of this right now. I am so appreciative for everyone who has taken the time to point out the red flags and offer encouragement and support. This whole community is freaking amazing and I'm just blown away. I'm also figuring out an exit strategy. I actually already have a small cash stash where I've been saving up money to take the licensing exam for the profession that my degree is aimed at. I realize now how sad it is that I've had to sneak cash into an envelope for an exam to advance my career, and how the only reason my boyfriend has been adamant that we couldn't afford this is because it would offer me better job opportunities with better pay and more chance for freedom. I'm literally re-examining every last detail of my relationship right now and uncovering more and more unsettling details. The rose-colored glasses are off. Those of you who guess that I've been pretty isolated from friends are correct. My social life is his social life, and I don't even know how that happened. Not wanting to go to my parents for help is more of a pride thing with a bit of estrangement. It wouldn't be ideal, but I'm understanding now that my situation is grave enough to consider putting my pride aside and asking them for help. I was, and I guess still am, feeling terrified about trying to live on my own since my boyfriend has been taking care of me my entire adult life, but as someone commented, I've been taking care of him, managing a house, and paying half a mortgage and bills. I can actually take care of my shit, I do not need him. That said, I'm emotionally gutted and am not ready to go nuclear on this situation just yet, but I'll post an update once I'm out to let everyone know how it goes. While I'm coming around to admitting that I'm in an emotionally abusive situation, I'm having a hard time imagining him getting violent with me. However, I hear your concerns and have read a lot of the resources you guys have provided and plan to act as though violence is a possibility even though I feel silly and dramatic for it, better to be dramatic than hurt. Again, thank you all so much. And now, onto the updates. Hey y'all, been one hell of a week for me. The feedback on my last post was really overwhelming, but I came away with it with two things. I'm not the asshole, and also my relationship is a mountain of red flags for abuse. Cool, cool. So I did a lot of reflecting and realized, yeah, okay, this looks bad, but I love him. I was confused as hell. I met up with one of my oldest childhood friends who I hadn't seen in a couple of years and cried my heart out on her couch, and she was nothing but kind and supportive, and that was the beginning of a crack of light making its way into my life. I've got people, something beyond my relationship, 
What really sealed my decision to leave was the way that my boyfriend reacted about me hanging out alone with a friend. He didn't want me to go, and when I was firm that it was happening, then he wanted to come with. And when I declined that, he threw a tantrum and was extremely passive-aggressive when I got home. That's when I realized, yeah, okay, screw this guy for real. He doesn't want me to have friends. I'm not living like this anymore. I decided to try and save up money on the side like many of you suggested, and once I had enough, to leave without warning. However, once I decided that I wanted out, it was really hard to play the good girlfriend and act like everything was normal. I think he sensed that something was up, and one morning while we were chatting over a perfectly nice breakfast together, he without warning grabbed me by the throat and threatened to kill me if I ever left him. Then he let go, grinned, and said, I'm just joking around. I tried to laugh it off, but it freaked me the hell out. I decided that I couldn't wait until I saved up money, so I swallowed my pride and reached out to my parents. We had a tepid dinner together where I explained in brief terms that I didn't feel safe and needed to leave my boyfriend ASAP. My mom didn't hesitate to offer my old room back even though it's been her office for years now. She converted it back to my bedroom that night and the next day while my boyfriend was at work, my parents helped me move out. I left him a note and he's been going crazy trying to reach me but I'm so done. So y'all weren't just right? You were really right. I didn't realize how unsafe I really was until he threatened to kill me. You guys had my effing back. I can't get over how amazing it is that a silly Reddit post has completely changed the trajectory of my life. I read every comment, every resource, every message. I've learned so much, and I can't thank you guys enough. To all the people who reached out offering money, that was unbelievable too. And I'm just so touched by the kindness displayed towards me. I'm so appreciative of the offers, but as of now, it looks like I am going to be able to swing this with some help from my parents. I also hope some girls out there who saw my original post maybe learned something valuable too. Life is too short to waste any of it on being a bang maid. In the comments, Gray Moria says, The first issue was always kind of a red herring. It's not about him not caring about the spoons, it's about him not caring about her, and then he escalates. I recommend everyone having their own spoon story to read Why Does He Do That by Lundy Bancroft, and to also find a way to squirrel away some funds for an escape plan. You'll never know if or when you might need it, but being strangled during an argument or sex should be a good indicator for you to use it and get away. Strangulation increases the risk of you being murdered by quite a lot. When I was growing up, my mom would always remind me that I do not need a man. I do not need to get married, I am my own person, and being single is not a handicap, and that I can have an amazing life being single. She would use my single aunts as an example, and they were good examples. They were awesome human beings with great careers and more money than they could ever need. I used to think that my mom's advice was odd, but now looking back, I realize that she was giving me the confidence to not rely on men and to realize that I do not need one to be whole. She was speaking from experience. As much as I love my dad, he made my mom quit her job to be a stay-at-home mom, penny-pinched any time he could, and did exactly zero to help with childcare or homework. She just didn't want me to end up like her, trapped in a life that she wanted to escape. I think she truly helped me avoid ever getting into abusive relationships because I always had the confidence to be alone. Dame of Dames replies, I hope your mom escaped. They're still married, but she just does whatever the hell she wants now that us kids are grown up. She goes on random vacations on her own several times a year, then my dad pays for them. Every year she goes to some monastery in Tibet with no electricity or reception for a month to meditate and just get away from all of us and then comes home with awesome photos. She loves it, and I think she's way happier now than she ever was before. Over a decade ago, I actually advised her to get a divorce, but she wouldn't. It's just hard when you've been out of the workforce for 20 years and have only a few friends who aren't family. The Kitten Patrol says, It's only spoons. It's only mustard. It's only lotion on a finger. It's only an ER trip. It's only accidental hits while asleep. I'm sure there's plenty more that we can add to this list. You're overreacting, he says, while throwing a tantrum. 
You are immature, says the guy who starts dating an underage girl in his mid-twenties. Unless there was prior physical abuse that OP didn't mention, this escalated straight to choking? Sweet squeezy jeezy, this guy was made of red flags like some bizarre Soviet golem. It was his desperation when he had a feeling that she was on the way out. The most dangerous time for victims is when they are pregnant or making an exit plan. Our next post is by a throwaway account titled, My female 27, soon to be husband, male 28, called me by his assistant's name during sex. My significant other and I have been high school sweethearts and we're due to get married this June. We just have a chemistry that works extremely well and always did. I love him very much and I know that he loves me too, but with what he did recently, I'm having extreme doubts about his faithfulness. We're trying to get pregnant and when we had sex a few days ago, he called me by his assistant's name right as he got off. He immediately got up and apologized and seemed extremely shocked. I was too. After that, he's been very apologetic and seemed genuinely remorseful, but I'm having difficulty coming around to forgiving him. The way he said it too came across as he was thinking about her. The only other person I've told about this is my mum and dad, and she thinks that my boyfriend has, or currently, sleeps with his assistant, and that his tongue slipped up. I'm having doubts because now everything looks suspicious to me. He goes to Dallas once every two weeks, and his assistant accompanies him. Those are work trips that are paid for by his company, but those are starting to look suspicious to me now. Three months ago, I got laid off from work, and he asked me if I could stay at home since we're trying to have a child, and I could be a stay-at-home mother. Now I don't know if I should depend on him, or try to get a job, or not. My life is just filled with confusion all of a sudden. Honestly, I didn't think that he would ever cheat on me, but I can't think of a reason why someone would say someone else's name after sex. His explanation is that he was thinking about work, and that is why his assistant's name slipped up. He has tried to fix things, but they don't seem enough for some reason. He told me if I want, I can go through his phone or his computer, and I did, but I didn't find anything. I want to trust him, I really do, but it feels foolish to me to do so now. My mom thinks he is 100% cheating, while my dad agrees that he also thinks that it could be a mistake, and I should make sure before I end the relationship. He does think that I should 100% be mad at him, even if it was a slip up. I don't know what to do with us being so close to getting married. Advice, please? In the comments, Dr. NDB says, Well, I can for sure say that if he works with colleagues a lot, that it can happen. Do this and that, Jessica. Did you send reports, Jessica? When you do this all day, it can come out automatically. I've seen it myself. Sometimes my college names his girlfriend in name of our girl college. It can happen. When you were little, you probably called your school teacher mom. Talk things out with him. Tell him that it's bugging you a lot. And OP replies, I haven't thought about this, and this could be a possibility. I've been to his workplace, and he does take her name quite a lot. Still, saying it during sex is still a bit too much, but if this is the case, I think I can forgive him. I just have to find a way to make sure that it isn't something else. Unable Snow says, Use your own money, and you should surprise him in Dallas on his next trip. OP says, He's supposed to leave tonight. I can visit him tomorrow since I have time. Well, I would show up after work at his apartment and see if his assistant is actually staying in a hotel. OP says, yeah, I just booked a ticket. I won't mind spending a day or two in Dallas myself if everything is like he says it is. Do you have the keys to the apartment? I'd go there, hang out, and wait for him to get home. You know, for a surprise. And OP says, I don't have the keys for that apartment. I can visit him at night time. He should be home alone at that time. I don't know if he is cheating, but damn, I don't know if I could get past that. OP says, I'm having difficulty too. If it was just the slip up, I'd be willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, but with the regular overnight trips to Houston, no way. I've worked in C-suites for many years. A guy and his assistant traveling out of town two times a month just does not sound believable to me. With Zoom meetings and conference calls and shared computer work and COVID, I just find it incredibly hard to believe that someone needs to be in another location that frequently and his assistant needs to be right there. 
Not a phone call away, not an email away, not a Zoom call away, but right freaking there every two weeks? Nope. That would be a deal breaker for me. I can't believe there hasn't been at least one hookup. That's what I was thinking. What person worth their salary cannot manage without their secretary for out-of-station trips? And if it is such a hectic job, then wouldn't the secretary be needed at the headquarters to deal with things while he's away? OP, stop trying to get pregnant and get a job. Do not let yourself be dependent on him right now. Are the Dallas trips overnight? Because in light of what he did, yeah, he looks suspicious as hell now. OP says, yup, it's overnight. Though he always told me that he stays and spends the night at his apartment in Dallas while she stays at a hotel. I don't know what to believe right now. He has an apartment in Dallas? I think you need to make a surprise visit the next time he's scheduled to travel. Get your answers, girl. If not, tell him that you want to accompany him on his work trips. And now, on to the update. A lot to unwrap here, but I'll start by thanking those who decided to try to help me out here. He came back from the last trip, and when he went again, I decided to go there. When I went to his apartment, I found her there, along with some other people. His co-workers were all planning to go out. I did make up a story as to why I was there to make sure that he wasn't embarrassed in front of his co-worker, because I stormed into his apartment, and I think that worked. They all went out after that. He stayed back and we had a fight, because according to him, I just humiliated him in front of his colleagues. Right now, things are pretty tense between us. He stayed back in Dallas saying that he needs some space, and we haven't talked after that. I don't know if I was trying to catch him in the act or not, but it didn't work out and now I feel a hundred times worse. I regret telling my mom about this, because she sent a VN to him and told him to stop being a baby, and nothing would have happened if I didn't say another woman's name. He sent me the VN that my mum sent him. I did confront my mum about this and she did apologise to him. Now I feel like maybe it was an honest mistake on his part and that I blew up out of proportion. Waiting on him to come back so that we can talk this out and fix this and move forward. Just a little update, things didn't go well like I wanted it to. In the comments, the clumsy pirate says, Did the assistant have any reaction to seeing you? Was she cold or surprised or anything? Honestly, this could be a harmless slip-up on his end, but I would do my due diligence before the wedding. No matter how angry he gets, divorces are so much harder than breakups. If you're trying to set the record straight before moving forward, he shouldn't be resistant about it. It was him who said another woman's name in bed. You didn't start any of it. OP replies, Everyone was a little surprised to see me there, to be honest. Not just her. My partner was surprised too. We aren't getting married. We are no longer engaged. Probably in the future. He's a pretty straightforward guy himself. Either he'll end it or be okay with it. Things are pretty bad right now, and I'm going to give him time and let him come and talk to me. Info. Why was it bad that you surprised him? What was wrong with you being around his colleagues, and especially his assistant? If he loves you, he should be glad to see you. What was the deal? What did you say when you entered the apartment that could have embarrassed him? I'm going to be honest, I'm not liking his behavior. What is up with his friends? This whole thing is messed up. What is he doing talking about this with his assistant? OP replies, I don't know what I said exactly because I was very angry at that time, but as I mentioned in the post above, I stormed into his apartment and was accusatory. I did salvage the situation, but I think in his mind that wasn't good enough. Edits, Forgot to mention my boyfriend told me that he told his assistant about this and she made the same mistake a while back with her fling because they refer to each other a lot. Second edit, he left his Mac at home so I decided to see if he was talking to her or not. I just opened his WhatsApp and he is not talking to her but his friends all telling him to break up with me. Like, I didn't even do anything drastic. His chat with his assistant is work related but I'm disturbed by what his friends say. Looks like a breakup is about to happen. I let him break up with me because I think that I'd get closure that way. The clumsy pirate says, I'm sorry that this is such a mess, OP, but I'm also looking at your edits and it's not good. I understand being a straightforward guy, but I don't know, is he very simple? Because unless he is, I don't know how he would explain saying that to his assistant. Yeah, so this awkward thing happened between me and my fiancé because of you, the assistant, 
How does he justify disclosing something intimate to her? He knows this is embarrassing for you as well. The more the story transpires, the more it seems like you were actually right to be wary of it. At the very least, it seems like there's some emotional entanglement going on here for him to not realize that sharing this with the girl is out of line. OP says, he is quite simple. Doesn't like to play games or make things complicated. He did, and she did something similar, but I can't say for sure how that topic might have come up. Right now reading his messages with his friends. I do hate it, and it hurts like shit that they are all rooting for him to break up with me. The situation is a total mess honestly, and I don't see a way back now. Why do his friends want him to break up with you? What are their reasons? OP says, mostly because they think that I ruined his relationship with my family forever, and that since I don't trust him, he should put his energy somewhere else. Most of them are in this realm. A few think that I did this in front of his co-workers to jeopardize his job. It's hard reading their messages. Third edit, reading his chat for a while, and the last thing he said was, I'll end it when I see her next. So it's over, pretty much. In the comments, Bookaholic Forever says, I trust my husband implicitly, but if he called out the name of a work colleague during sex, I would have serious effing doubts. And the assistant told him that she did the same thing with her, fling? Bizarre. That for me clinched it. To me, if someone I worked with was like, you know I said your name while I was having sex with my partner, I'd be like, whoa, okay, we need to set some boundaries immediately, and I would then distance myself as much as possible. I'm impressed that he's been able to cover his tracks so well because, oh, the person you suspect is my affair partner also did the same super sus thing that I did, is a terrible cover story. They're saying each other's names during sex and telling each other about it? That's not normal for a professional manager-employee relationship. That's what I'm reading and going, huh? Regardless of whether or not they're actually sleeping together, that on its own is super weird and unprofessional. I wouldn't be able to look past that. Yeah, I think that clinches it for me too. Why are you discussing it with the assistant? What's going on? It's unfortunate that the relationship is ending now because of this, but I think it would have ended eventually if this had come out regardless in the future. It's really creepy and messed up to be talking about that with your assistant and being like, yeah, I can relate to you too, after saying something weird with your fling. Haha, <laughs> I said your name with my fiancé during sex. That's a really normal thing to say, haha, <laughs> right? Um, assistant? Yeah, we're cool now, right? We're, we're buddies still. Personally, if I was OP and my husband said something like this, I don't think that I'd want to marry them. If they could just do something like that so nonchalant, have been with me for years and I trust that they're a person with a brain, and they come out and say that, I'm not marrying you, I don't trust you. What's wrong with you? How are you not the person that I thought you were? Anyway, that's my little rant there. I think it's good that they're breaking up because this is only going to get messier if they try to keep it together. I don't like it at all. Anyway guys, that's where I'm going to end today's episode. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!